there was two nights particularly in the hospital when I honestly didn't know whether I would make it or not. I was under incredible pressure. Got trips up and, and all that they needed to do. But I remember those nights particularly, really crying out to the Lord and, and asking him to help me. And asking him to even supernaturally just do something that would encourage me and bring me through. And I remember the next day I had a night from hell. <laughs> And you got to understand this in, in the isolation ward. When no one else can get in, when no one else, no pastor, no friend, no family members, when no one else was allowed in, God sent a cleaner. And all of a sudden this cleaner had come in and he was like a ray of sunshine. And he began to chat to me, and he asked me how I was. And he began to talk to me and say to me about, about hanging in there. And then we got chatting and we got talking, and he, and he turned around and he, and, and he said to me that he was a missionary in Nigeria for 14 years. And he began to tell me how God had saved many, many souls through his ministry. In just this last couple of years, he had found himself back home in Northern Ireland and he's encouraging my heart. And he's telling me about souls and about the love of Jesus and the love of God. And I'm just sitting going, wow, when God needs to reach you, he knows exactly who is the right person. And in that moment of time, it was a cleaner. No one else could get in, God sent a cleaner. He left that day and then he says this as he stood at the door. He says, son, can I pray for you? I says, absolutely. And as he began to pray at the door, he couldn't touch me. <clears throat> as he began to pray at the door, he began to ask God the Holy Ghost to visit me. He began to ask God to heal my body and touch my lungs. He stood at that doorway and he pleaded with God Almighty to spur my life and to continue to use me. And then he left. And what was incredible was that after he left, <clears throat> he periodically would walk past my window and give me a thumbs up. And that night, I remember, I started to turn around. Could it have been the prayer of a cleaner? That night I began to desire a packet of prawn cocktail crisps, Kato. And I asked the Lord, because no one could get to me. And I says, Lord, is it possible that you could get me a packet of prawn cocktail crisps and a tin of coke? Because that night I began to turn. The next morning, cleaner came. He brought in a bag. And in that bag, was two oranges, a tin of Coke, and a packet of prawn cocktail crisps. Don't tell me that God doesn't know. God knows our every need. He knows every desire. And he just passed the bag through the door. He, he couldn't come in. And he just says, it's a gift from the Lord. I sat up. I had them crisps. God is a God, folks, who is personal. He knows the deepest desires of our hearts. He knows what we have need of. I want to encourage you out there today. God knows what you have need of. He knows your heart's desire. He is an incredible saviour. 
ever underestimate what God can do with you. Thank you to that cleaner. You know who you are if you ever see this. Thank you for hearing the voice of God and reaching someone like me. For you that are saved, keep your eyes upon him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And for you that doesn't know Jesus Christ, I would encourage you, lift up your eyes and look to heaven. And with a cry from your heart, say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And go home justified, just as if you had never sinned. May God bless you. May you know the love of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. What a Savior. Amen.